Scan statistics. Scan statistics are by far the most popular cluster detection um, method in the public health and the crime analysis work. The principle behind them is very simple, and in fact, there's a long history going back to Openshaw, um, where you basically count events within a given shape. The tricky part is to decide whether the number of counts, the counts that you get within a given shape is somehow elevated with respect to the rest. So that's the key aspect of a scan statistic. Typically, centroids are used for areas, uh, although these scan statistics can also be applied to points, as we call them marked points, with points with a value. And um, the scan shape itself originally was a circle and has been developed into um, ellipses as well as irregular shapes in a, a large literature on scan statistics. And uh, in spatial analysis, there are basically two kinds, two procedures. One is called the BSAG Newell statistic, and that uh, uses a, a count of events until a given number of events is reached. And then the other approach, which is by far the more popular one, is colder scan statistic, where you also count, but you count until a given population is reached. So both of these you can think of as ways of you start with a given location and you keep moving out and you count what happens in that region and either you count how many events happen in the region and when you reach your critical cutoff which you pre-specified and you stop or you count what the population is in the region and when you reach the critical cutoff you stop. Uh, let's look at BSEG Newell first. So the idea is you aggregate units until you have reached a pre-specified number of events. And then with that region, you compare the number of events in that region um, to um, basically its probability under the null hypothesis of equal risk. And this is very uh, common procedure. This is also um, the basis for what's known as Choynovsky maps, which we haven't covered, but these are maps where in each of the areas you uh, figure out the probability that you would observe that many counts under a Poisson distribution with the mean count for the whole air whole region as the parameter. So the same goes on here. So you have the whole area, you count all the events in the whole area, you divide by the population of the whole area. That is your equal risk hypothesis. That is the parameter for a Poisson distribution. And then given your counts, you find out, well, what is the probability that I have this number of counts if my events follow the equal risk hypothesis. And if you have many more counts, then that probability will be very small. And that is when you um, um, call this a cluster. This is an, an area where you have reached the critical number of events, but within that area, given its population, there's many more events than you would expect under the null hypothesis of equal risk, and therefore we call this a cluster. So the rationale is based on the probability of that many events occurring given the sample, which is the population for the area, uh, under the equal risk assumption. So the equal risk assumption is estimated by just taking the overall average, adding up all the events, adding up all the populations and taking the ratio. Then with that, you can compute for anything. Uh, what is the probability that so many counts will happen? And if that probability is too low, especially in, on the high end, if there are too many events, then you call it a cluster. So typically in practice, how do you do this? You typically take the centroids and you take the nearest neighbors and you sort them
in order of increasing distance and you keep moving out and so you center on a particular location take the first neighbor add up the events if it reaches the critical threshold you stop if not you go to the third neighbor and so you keep going up so obviously the statistic is sensitive to the threshold you choose and in, in practice and as we'll see in the lab you typically experiment with different thresholds and see how uh, this uh, the location of the clusters is affected and you um, the results are a lot of clusters and all these clusters are basically groupings of base units that reach the critical level of counts and that have a an extreme probability so it's highly unlikely that these kinds of arrangement this particular arrangement would have occurred under the equal risk hypothesis the uh, side effect or the downside if you wish of this rationale is that the same area can be in multiple clusters and so uh, typically you sort the clusters and you take the one with the highest significance meaning the lowest p-value and that is your most likely cluster and then you have a second most likely cluster and and so on so for example using again the school number of schools and the population in the districts in Nepal the most likely cluster is an area that we haven't identified in any of the previous uh, techniques but the cluster number two does find some overlap with some of the local Moran uh, and G statistic clusters but it's a different notion of cluster it's not based on comparing the unit to its immediate neighbors it's based on the probability under the equal risk assumption so that's a different take on this and it completely avoids this um, variance instability issue because you're dealing with the events as drawn from a Poisson distribution directly so you don't have to worry about the rates in that sense uh, this is not always that easy to interpret first of all the p-values themselves just like with any local statistic they are suspect there's multiple comparisons there are sequential tests anything that is bad is happening here so um, be very careful and typically one only uses the most significant or maybe the first two most significant clusters and the second um, issue with the interpretation is that sometimes and oftentimes these clusters are overlapping in the sense that the same unit can appear in multiple clusters and we actually have that in our example in that some of these central districts are in both cluster one and cluster two so then the other statistic called the scan statistic as i mentioned is by far the most uh, commonly used there the principle is similar but different and so rather than aggregating units until you reach a total number of events you aggregate until you reach a target population so the target population is again something you specify and then once you've reached the target population then instead of doing this Poisson distribution probability you do a likely ratio likelihood ratio test and then the area that has the highest value for the likelihood ratio test is the winner is the most likely cluster and so what is the rationale here the likelihood ratio is again with the null hypothesis being equal risk so then you know how many area how many counts you can expect in your area as well as outside the area and then if you compare the actual observed um, events in the area and the actually observed events outside of the area you can show and the technical details are in the paper that is a likelihood ratio test and you just take the maximum of the likelihood ratio test and that's how the clusters are identified so technically we have the maximum of these ratios of observed over expected and we only do it for those areas where the observed are larger than the expect larger than we would have expected under equal risk because otherwise it doesn't uh, it's not of interest uh, 
So you very much the same way, you start with a location and you keep adding neighbors according to the size of the scan, either a circle or an ellipse or an irregular unit, keeps adding neighbors until you hit your target population count. And then you have the four magnitudes. You have the uh, number of events inside, the number of events outside, the expected events inside, the expected events outside, and then you're in business and you can compute the likelihood. So you do this for all the scans that you can identify, all the areas that meet the critical population value, and then you pick the one with the largest likelihood. And then Kolderf also in introduces uh, inference, and that inference is unlike um, bisac newell where the inference is based on an actual assumed population and its probability. In the uh, Kolderf scan statistic, the inference is based on randomization. So you do a number of simulations on the constant risk and compute what the likelihood ratio would have been under those situations of constant risk. And then just like we've done throughout now a number of times, you compare the actual observed statistic to the reference distribution and compute a pseudo p-value. And then the results of cold off scan statistic are, again, the scans locations organized in, in order of importance with the um, highest uh, significance, the smallest p-value as cluster 1, the next most p-value as cluster 2. And here again, we see using the same example, cluster 1 is totally different from anything we've seen so far, but cluster 2 does have some overlap, both with b newell and with the clusters we identified in the local Moran. So, um, is this better? It's different. And the moral of the story is to use a number of these techniques and then investigate them each. And remember that these are exploratory techniques. They do, they do not say anything about the actual process that may have caused these clusters. Um, the interpretation is very intuitive, actually. The most likely cluster has the highest uh, likelihood ratio and the, the highest significance. Uh, the other clusters are, uh, you know, as you go down in the likelihood and you go down in the significance, you have cluster number two, cluster number three, and so on. Uh, just like all the other methods, uh, the all the other cluster analyses and local statistics, the p-values will suffer from multiple comparisons and sequential testing. And there have been some recent proposals to address that and adjust that. These are a little too technical for this class, but it's out there. If you're interested, you can check it out. There is a large literature on spatial scan statistics, and they are incorporated in the SAT scan software, which, because it's not open, open source, we don't use in this class. Instead, we use uh, the R package Spatial Epi, which incorporates one of the many uh, cold R scan statistics. Okay, that concludes uh, this section dealing with clusters, local spatial autocorrelation.